Hey, what's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome to the channel. If you guys are new, welcome. If you guys are a Flix Talk family member, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys my spoiler-free review on Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Now, this film is out in theaters now, May 24th, 2024. And I gotta say, before I get into my review, my likes, my dislikes, this is a perfect way to kick off summer 2024. So let me just give you a little bit of backstory of where I'm coming from as someone that's been watching a slew of older 70s, 80s, 90s movies in the comfort of my own home. It was a bit different once tickets went on sale and I did get my pre-sale tickets to go watch Furiosa in theaters. It was interesting for the simple fact that I haven't sat my butt in a theater in such a long time. And the simple fact of that is I don't think that a movie is worth getting up, going to the theater, buying a ticket, an overpriced ticket, I should say, and sitting back and watching a movie. Now, that's a hot take. I'm so sure that's a hot take because a lot of movies probably have come out since I have seen my last movie. And a lot of you guys are going to be like, what about this movie, this movie, this movie? It just didn't grasp my eye for whatever reason, but Mad Max has always been something that's been a fun, wild ride. George Miller, the director and writer of this film and the predecessor of this film, and I mean, we're gonna be talking about a prequel today. So Mad Max Fury Road is obviously the next one to follow this one up, even though it did come out before this film, which was way back in 2015. Y'all remember 2015? Almost 10 years ago, Mad Max Fury Road hit the scene and I was blown away. I can't remember if I did see that movie in a standard definition theater or an IMAX or I don't remember the format that I saw it in, but I was just blown away at what I saw. So once again, spoiler free review for this one. Hit that big thumbs up to support the channel. Consider subscribing today. I'm gonna try to do a lot more reviews guys as I am going back to the theater this summer and hopefully the rest of the year. A lot of big releases coming up that are grasping my attention and I want to sit my ass in theater and get that theater experience, so to speak. So Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. This is the origin story of Miss Furiosa, the character that we were introduced to in Mad Max Fury Road. If you haven't seen that one and you're watching or planning to watch this one, why? Don't do it that way. Please go in chronological order, kind of. And I know I'm going to keep you know, uh, reverting or, or, or just kind of having to explain what I'm talking about because Fury Road is obviously the lead off to this movie. This movie is the prequel of an origin character, though we get a lot of character cameos that we see in Mad Max Fury Road. Try to keep up. Watch Mad Max Fury Road. If anything, wait for this to come out, uh, whether it be digital or theater. Watch this one first and then watch Mad Max Fury Road. Now, one huge like for the Mad Max saga that we've gotten so far, and I'm talking about sagas as it's like a huge franchise. I mean, I'm not counting the original Mel Gibson movies, which also George Miller was a part of as well. Whether as a writer, screenplay, producer, he had his hands in this franchise for such a long time. I'm only talking about Mad Max Fury Road and this movie, Furiosa. I like the visual stylistic choices that George Miller is choosing for this film. You notice it right off the bat. In this film, it's a little less, but if you're talking about Fury Road once again, and I'm gonna be comparing a lot, there's a lot of quick cut zoom ins. There's a lot of people walking around like they're almost like NPC like. And I noticed that a lot in this movie. For some reason, there's like a fast cut of people just walking unnatural like. So you kind of get a zoom in sometimes of Chris Hemsworth eating something and it's like, like a sped up TikTok version. And I'm like, why is he choosing to do that? But they actually did that in Mad Max Fury Road. So once again, you're gonna have to watch both of these movies to get, oh, okay, this is kind of the stylistic choice that this guy went with, and somehow it works. I mean, there's a lot of oversaturation, there's a lot of grime, there's a lot of desaturation in this movie as well when it's needed, and I appreciated all aspects of this. It definitely looked fluid. Once again, this is the prequel. Now, another huge like for this movie, at least for me, was all of the character cameos that we got. I don't think it's much of a spoiler if I show on green some of these characters that I'm talking about, but I definitely was like, oh, there's that guy looking a little younger. There's that guy looking a little younger. And it really seemed like, okay, we're getting Anya Taylor-Joy as Furiosa in her 
early 20s possibly and in Mad Max Fury Road she's like in her obvious 30s. So it is very cool to see the age progression. Everybody looked very similar, even though this movie was damn near filmed 10 years after the fact. I think they did a really good job to the continuity connecting the two. Now let's talk about this cast, starting off with Anya Taylor-Joy, our leading lady. So in the first part of this movie, we get young Furiosa, okay? We get a very origin, origin story of how she is taken away from this utopia. And you see it in the trailer once again, it's not much of a spoiler, and she's brought into the Citadel, which is part of this wasteland. There's a couple that were introduced to throughout this movie. I think it's a very unique take, a very unique twist on a post-apocalyptic world that we've seen in movies before. They just elaborate a little more, and sometimes you see these characters that look like creatures, and... I watched Fury Road, I rewatched Fury Road, I should say, just a couple of days ago, and it was such a breath of fresh air to go into this movie knowing what to expect. So if you guys are going into Furiosa and you haven't seen Fury Road for a while, I definitely urge you watch it, rewatch it if you guys can, and man, I think you're going to do yourself a service because it's going to feel like this whole connective tissue of a Mad Max saga world that I think you guys will definitely enjoy once again. And going back to Anya Taylor-Joy's character, once again, young Anya Taylor-Joy, I believe all the tragic events and all the mayhem that's going on in her young adult or preteen life, I, I don't even really know, maybe 10, 11 at this time when a lot of stuff is going on, she's witnessing a lot of horrific stuff that a little kid should not see, but it adds character and character development. I mean, it all, once again, unfolds in front of your eyes. You get to see all of these creatures once again. That's all I can call them because people are walking around looking like hobgoblins. They have tumors sticking out. They have, you know, deformed deformities. It's, it's, it's a disgusting sight. And you know what? One thing that if I have to jump to my dislikes about some of these characters or at least the story for Furiosa, is we don't get much of a backstory of what's happened to the world other than a quick, the quickest narration in the beginning of the film of the downfall of society. That doesn't really tell me anything. I'm kind of, I need to see it, you know what I mean? We're just thrown into, once again, these wastelands. I don't know, maybe another prequel is in the works to kind of show how we got to this point of people breaking off into gangs and all this mayhem and... How do they choose the attire that they're, you know, all geared up in? And everybody looks different. The war boys and the war pigs and all this, you know, all of this stuff is fantastic. I know we're focusing on Furiosa, the character, but it just blows my mind how something like this can occur. So I am intrigued and more open to spinoffs of a Mad Max universe. If they were to make some more Mad Max movies, I don't know what character they could focus on really, but... I would love to see more of this, kind of just how this all came to be. So now we have adult Furiosa played by Anya Taylor-Joy, and she's a woman of few words, I should say. But we do definitely get our Mulan Pocahontas story, someone that definitely wants to, you know, kick ass with the rest of the boys. She wants to blend in and she just wants to show her skills. And I like that once again. Her actions are being shown. She doesn't have to give a huge monologue of why she wants to do what she needs to do or get revenge here or there or go after this person or fight for her, you know, wasteland group or the Citadel or whatever have you. She is just in the mix of things. She'll just take things when she needs to. She has a mission and an agenda at hand. And I like that about her character. And I think Anya Taylor-Joy, when we first heard about this casting, we were like, little 90 pound Anya Taylor-Joy is gonna do all of this? I don't think so. But you know what? Along the way, she really started to open me up at least to the possibilities of a character like this existing. So, I mean, I know it's fiction, but you know what I'm talking about for the movie's sake, guys. I really did like her in the end, and I think she's a phenomenal actress. I've seen her in a lot of other movies. She's stellar. She is awesome. I have no gripes to Anya Taylor-Joy. Her emotion was there when it needed to be. Her hate was there when she needed to be. It was kind of only two emotions. There was no happiness in this movie whatsoever, for her at least. And I really did appreciate her acting and her role in this movie once again. Now, Chris Hemsworth as Dr. Dementis, uh, a dark Dementis or evil Dementis. I forget they call him. And he has a variation of his name. Now, I still remember when I saw the first trailer for this movie, the teaser trailer, and I was like, where's Chris Hemsworth? And people were like, you didn't notice him? He was right there. The prosthetic on his nose was 
such a just a, a mind freak for me that I didn't even know that that was Chris Hemsworth. They also throw some contacts in his eyes that are just like pure blackness and pure darkness, which I think was a, a purposely done thing to kind of just invoke this emptiness, you know, and we get to hear some of his emptiness and darkness at the end of this film a little bit. And, you know, I thought his character developed into Someone who I thought was almost like a Ragnarok character at first. And yes, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, no, that kind of humor. Chris Hemsworth is never going to let go of his comedy humor, whether that's intentional or unintentional. I think it's just ingrained in him at this time. He's not full Ryan Reynolds at this point where you just show him on screen. You just laugh. But he definitely has these subtle hints of comedy. But once again. It developed along the way. He started doing more and more evil shit. And by the third act, I was like, this guy needs to die. And they laid that out beautifully. Chris Hemsworth, I think you're a master at your craft as well. All right, now Tom Burke as Praetorian Jack. I don't even know who this actor is, but you know what? He was a stellar co-star in this movie. He was someone that was definitely alongside Furiosa's journey. He believed her. He saw what potential she had in this fight of hers. And I think he added a bit to her story. It was definitely a layered story of people that she met, things that she was going to. And he was definitely a chapter in her book. He was great as well. All right, now the story for Furiosa, a Mad Max saga is simple. Revenge is a dish best served cold, right? So it's that typical Quentin Tarantino revenge type movie. Someone's wronged and that person's got to get got. And that's exactly what it is. And in between, we get to see the wasteland and we get to see just different characters once again from Fury Road. And it's a lot of driving back and forth, you know, in this war pig and, and different, you know, gasoline tankers and stuff like that. Also, it's really cool to kind of see the development of the tech because once again, this is supposed to be about 10 years, I would say roughly before Fury Road. So you get to see how the tech has advanced a little bit, it, which is really funny because the people don't advance at all. They look like cave people once again. They just keep getting worse. So... The tech definitely advanced in this, and I, I liked it. Once again, I liked it. We get to see all of Furiosa's backstories, how she got that metal arm. I don't want to give too many spoilers. I like the story for what it was. It definitely got repetitive, and I understand that there are certain deals that needed to get done. This movie is two hours and 30 minutes, guys. Fury Road is about two hours, so just keep that in mind. There's a lot more character development. It's kind of a slow roll out a little bit even though the beginning of the movie starts off a little quick paced as far as you know spurts of action and things are happening they were like whoa you know and then it does slow down a little bit where we get a lot of talking and stuff and then we get our epic george miller you know a uh, uh, race in the desert type of scene that's great but it happens a little later in the movie i'm just gonna say that unlike fury road where it happens like in the first 45 minutes okay just a heads up it is a slow burn a little bit, depending on who you are. It's a slow epic, I should say. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. But I think some people don't like that and they're going to tune out. But I think for me, even someone that does tune out all the time, I appreciated it because I love this world once again. Now, the action in this movie was top notch. I had mentioned along the way, or at least in the beginning of this review, the stylistic choices of George Miller, where certain things are sped up or oversaturated or in the first well, not in the first. Fury Road. God, this is, see what I'm talking about? Fury Road. There was definitely scenes, especially if you're watching it in 4K. If you're watching it on a nice OLED 4K TV, you guys are going to notice all the green screen and all the people, you know, that don't look like that they're placed there, that they're CGI. So in this movie, we didn't get that. I, I didn't notice that much green screen or CGI and whatnot, but I did notice CGI people flipping and stuff like that, which was a big gripe of mine for at least the Fury Road, they just look like Play-Doh people getting thrown around, you know what I mean? And, and I understand real people can't get thrown around like that. That's totally fine. It just stood out to me and we got that same kind of, I, I thought technology would advance at least, you know, in the next 10 years for a movie to come out to see a uh, prequel and it would look a little better. It looks the same. I'm sorry, it looks exactly the same. So I'm a little nitpicky in the CGI department, though things like car crashes, the fireballs, the flamethrowers, people swinging, you know, um, 
to get too much spoilers, but I'll just say that some of these Wasteland characters, they do get a little more crafty with some of the gangs of, of, of how they're attacking. I will say that, and I really did appreciate it because I don't know if they show it necessarily in the trailer, but I thought it was cool because it did seem primitive, but it also seemed advanced, if that makes any, any sense whatsoever. So overall, I think Furiosa, if I had any gripes, I would trim the runtime. And I know a lot of you guys are going to hate when I say that. Y'all hate when I say that. I would trim the runtime to closer to two hours. Okay, because I kind of got, once again, that repetitive flow a little bit of driving back and forth. And I understood the objective at hand. And I, you know, I also will say this. I forgot to mention, there is a little bit of character bond between Anya Taylor-Joy and Tom Burke's character that I don't know if they focused on too much in the trailer, or at least I didn't think I knew about this at all, but there's a little bit there and it does add a little character development and emotion to Furiosa of, well, <laughs> okay, no spoilers, we're done guys. I'm gonna give Furiosa a solid four out of five. And if you guys have seen the film already, please let me know your score down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. If you guys did appreciate mine, please hit that big thumbs up. Consider subscribing today to the channel for more. And guys, I haven't done a review in ages, I feel like. If you guys did appreciate it, please let me know in the comments below. Should I do more reviews for the channel? Spoiler free, of course, because I want you guys to go out and see the movies. I want you guys to go support these actors, support good movies. Have a good fun time this summer. Why not? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe, guys. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gone.